Hello, thank you for joining us today. I am Patrice Welliford, the Senior Director of Impact and Collective Giving at the Minneapolis Foundation. And I'm Joanne Stately. I'm the Director of Impact Strategy for Economic Vitality. Thank you for watching this recording. This recording is about the fall 2021 grant round of the One, MP One MPLS Fund, which is focused on capacity building. We hope this webinar will help you as you prepare your application for the capacity building grant round. And that includes whether you're deciding to apply or you've read the guidelines already, um, but just came here for some additional information and um, know you're gonna apply when the grant round opens. So the One MPLS Fund is a collective impact fund of the Minneapolis Foundation that is designed to be nimble and responsive to emerging, emerging needs that are aligned with our foundation's mission. The fund was launched in 2018 with an initial investment of $1 million from the foundation and it supports organizations and projects that demonstrate the systems change, innovation, innovative solutions, intersectionality, multi-generational approaches and approaches that are in projects that are grounded in community voice. So we just wanna give you a little overview of the One Minneapolis Fund and uh... We did some very responsive grant making last year. When we launched the fund between April and May, we gave out almost $2 million of grants that came through a competitive grant process that went to 147 organizations throughout the seven county area. And these were very specific responsive requests to COVID at that time. And we wanted to focus on the areas that of individuals that were impacted by their employment, um, they had re reduced income as a result of the pandemic, and particularly those that were vulnerable, including contract workers, artists, and students. And we also sought to seek the basic needs of vulnerable populations, including our older adults and youth. The One Minneapolis Rebuild was our second grant-making opportunity, and this grant was to support immediate short-term strategies to select, to really assist our Black, Indigenous, and people of color in Minneapolis businesses as a result of COVID and also the destruction that happened after the civil unrest related to the murder of George Floyd. We did some rapid response grant making to some key intermediaries, $100,000 each, that were really out there to support those BIPOC businesses that faced some of this destruction. $1.5 million was given to other 16 nonprofits through October continuing that effort of investment in supporting Black, Indigenous, and people of color, color businesses in Minneapolis. The grant round we launched in October. Again, it's focused on capacity building. We recognize that people in our community stepped up in a big way to respond to the pandemic and really showed extraordinary generosity and resiliency during a time of unprecedented need in our community. Many local nonprofits also stepped up and pivoted quickly to serve more people or meet the needs of their communities in new ways by adapting their existing programs or launching new efforts. These changes stretch the capacity of many nonprofits and put further stress on organizations that are grounded in the needs of Black, Indigenous, and people of color communities, especially given the disproportionate impact of the pandemic on these communities. When we were deciding to launch this grant round, um, we, we listen to different stakeholders, including connecting with the Minnesota Council on Foundations, which are connected with the Minnesota Council on Nonprofits. And again, Joanne and I had just been hearing that so many nonprofits were stretched by the pandemic and definitely needed to focus on their own capacity. So again, this grand round is grounded in what we, the feedback we've heard and seeks to enhance local nonprofits' capacity to navigate the ongoing pandemic because we know the pandemic isn't over and meet the evolving needs of the diverse communities our local nonprofits serve. So who is eligible to apply? This, this grant opportunity through the One Minneapolis Fund is really focused on nonprofits. So these are nonprofit entities with budgets of up to about $3 million. And those, those are the entities that have been serving youth, children and families or adults that have been seeking to increase um, their living wage career and the support for business opportunities during the pandemic. 
there is a kind of a continuation of what we did last year under, under these areas of support. And we're continuing as we bring that forward. So if you were an applicant before and got funded, um, this is kind of similarly wanting to continue to invest in your capacity to serve these populations in need. Um, a nonprofit intermediary, we've gotten some calls about what does that mean? This is more than being a fiscal agent. A nonprofit intermediary is a group that works with other nonprofits and provides other support other than just the back office financial uh, uh, reportability. Uh, this is an organization that is providing technical support to a smaller nonprofits, assisting them with their planning, their development, and with their own capacity as well. And these type of nonprofits can have larger budgets than the 3 million that we identified initially as being one of those eligible guidelines. So in terms of what we seek to fund, there are four categories, staff administra administration and capacity, staff wellness resources and incentives, technology resources, and planning and visioning resources. So for the staff administration and capacity focus, we're seeking to bridge funding to implement programs that have experienced increased demand during the pandemic, and potentially they've received restricted state and federal funding. So just again, recognizing that even though, you know, government individuals have stepped up, the nonprofits may have some capacity needs in terms of their staff and their administration that may not be covered by their other sources of support. In terms of the staff wellness resources, we recognize that the past year has been very taxing for a lot of organizations, and we want to help nonprofits adjust how they work to meet the demands, the needs and demands of the community as the pandemic continues amid the Delta variant surge. So um, this could be if there are things that your staff needs to like incentivize them as they like continue to push and work hard to support the community. And again, to be able to help organizations think about staff wellness. The other category here, the third category is for additional technology resources. So we recognize that many nonprofit organizations had to adjust how they deliver the services that they offer to meet the needs of the community. And that can impose challenges for nonprofits in terms of their technology infrastructure. And then the fourth category here is planning and visioning resources. So with this, we're seeking to help executive directors and nonprofit leaders and their boards be able to reflect and seek advice to build the capacity of their organization to be sustainable in terms of the operations, fundraising, communications, community engagement, or what other, or other areas that they choose during and beyond the pandemic. So again, with this one, align boards and executive directors, the opportunity to have space to reflect and seek advice as they build, as they seek to build the capacity of the organization to be like sustainable now and into the future. Joanne, is there anything you would add about some of these areas just to help clarify? I think it's really important to understand when we're talking about capacity building, we're not talking about just your general operating support at this point. We want these funds to be used to help advance some of your work where you have to bring in some other either uh, technical support, work with consultants, maybe help with your strategic planning. It's, it's those type of dollars you usually don't have available in your budget to be able to think about this and how this will help grow your capacity going forward. And to be able to think too about your staffing. You know, a lot of nonprofits have experienced burnout, turnover. So again, just thinking about how do you keep and support some of your existing staff people. Thanks, Joanne. Mm -hmm. So some of our other guidelines, we are very uh, intentional about our geography. And in here we are talking about, this means the city of Minneapolis and our first ring suburbs that touch the city of Minneapolis in Hennepin County. And as far as impact, we're going to, priority is gonna be given to organizations that advance equity. And that is part of their mission. And we are also supporting priority of those those organizations that are led by Black, Indigenous, and people of color as well. So some additional information that we want to share is that we have approximately between $800,000 and $900,000 to grant. So that's listed here. 
the grant range for this opportunity is between $10,000 and $50,000. We're expecting the average to be between $30,000 and $40,000. Based on our available funding, we anticipate being able to support 20 to 30, 30 grants. And the grant period for this opportunity is between January and December of 2022. So again, we have approximately 800,000 to 900,000 the grant. The grant range is listed here with between 10 and $50,000. And we're expecting the average request to fall between $30,000 and $40,000. And again, we expect to be able to offer between 20 and 30 grants. And the grant period period for this award is the calendar year of 2022. So Patrice, I, I'd just like to add on to when we're talking about how much we have available to grant. The One Minneapolis Fund, again, is a responsive grant making opportunity. And we raise these dollars uh, kind of in real time. So you might wonder, well, why don't you know exactly what you have? Because we're raising additional dollars up to the date when we make these decisions. So we're trying to give you a range. And the more successful that we are, the more we have available to grant. Thanks, Joanne. That's a great point to add. Um, more information about the fund in general is available on our website. Uh, but yes, this is a responsive fund. So this is what we know at this moment that we have available to grant now. So some key dates that we want to share. This opportunity, we previewed it on our website on October 1st. And today, the day we're recording, this is November 1st. So now the online aspect, of the online component of this application is open. Um, there was a preview document that really closely follows the online application, but you have the opportunity to download the preview document from our website, but also then log into our online portal and see the online application. So the online application will close on November 22nd at 4 p.m. Applications in our system are time stamped and late applications will not be accepted. I really want to encourage people to, if you're not familiar with our online system, to go ahead and get started with an account and contact our grants administration team. That's all on our website, and I'll explain a little bit more about it, or we'll explain a little bit more, more about it in a subsequent slide. But again, don't wait till the last minute to check out our online system and make sure you have access to it. And just know that um, starting an application before 4 p.m. But then attempting to submit it after 4 p.m. won't allow you to set this deadline. So it has to be submitted by 4 p.m. on November 22nd. We plan to notify um, applicants of the status of their, of their application by January 10th. So at that point, you'll learn if you're, you've been approved or denied for funding. And then a grant, the grant period again for this opportunity is the calendar year of 2022. So you'll see that listed here. But again, Deadline on November 22nd at 4 p.m. Joanne, is there any of the frequently asked questions that you think we should point out first or really emphasize? I think we need to emphasize again that this is strictly for those nonprofit businesses that we earlier talked about. So it's not individuals or for profit entities are not eligible to apply for these funds. If you're a current grantee, you are eligible to apply for the One Minneapolis Capacity Building Guidelines if you fit those areas that we're interested in providing dollars to support capacity building. Uh, organizations, do you have to be in Minneapolis? Um, the opportunity is open to organizations in Minneapolis and the inner ring, first ring suburbs. Uh, there have been questions of groups beyond that and some of the other suburbs and saying that they uh, serve uh, clients in, in Minneapolis. We'd ask you to identify kind of who is your priority, who, who, do, who is your priority to serve uh, with that geographic area. And if you are serving uh, a majority of Minneapolis, you can certainly put that in your application. Uh, others have asked, can they also apply independently and with a technical assistance provider? We do not recommend that, uh, that if you're applying, you should be applying for what you're seeking for your own capacity building alone. And the guidelines have stated that this grant is for seven months. Actually, we've adjusted that, and we expect this to probably run at least 12 months. We want to honor kind of your work and how you do your work. But if it's a shorter time period, that's fine, too. Yeah, we wanted to give people up to that 12-month or so period, originally thinking 
that this will be a shorter time frame. Thank you so much for joining us today on this call. Joanne and I are available via email. We ask that you um, email one of us, not both. Uh, we respond pretty quickly and we've been meeting with people throughout, uh, virtually throughout the past month to answer questions. So we'll get back to you as soon as we can. In terms of our online website, Joanne and I are not able to set you up with an online, um, with an account to access the online application. So I'm gonna encourage you to contact our grants administration team. Their email address is listed here. It's grant support at mplsfoundation.org. And again, I wanna emphasize that we really hope people will not wait to the last minute to reach out to grants admin to make sure you're all set up in the online system. Their email address is here. If you contact them though on like a Saturday or a Sunday, just note that they work business hours during the week. So Monday through Friday, between 8.30 and 4.30 p.m. is the best time to contact them. Like again, they work during business hours. And just two quick reminders. Please read the guidelines before you contact us so that you're familiar with what we've already put on the website and through this webinar. It'll make any type of our phone calls with you go much easier. Secondly, make sure you get registered online quickly. Don't wait until the last minute to try to do that. And we wish you um, the best in your application process. We do, and we, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thank you.